In 1973, a group of leading scientists came together to form a new interdisciplinary organization called the Materials Research Society. Now, 50 years later, the group has over 14,000 members from across 90 countries. They're all coming right here to San Francisco to celebrate the anniversary of this society and all the amazing insights that have come out of it. Hi, I'm Tui Vu, host of MRS TV. We're back again to bring you all the best of the MRS Spring Meeting. Only this time, we're not just focusing on this meeting, we're also focusing on the 50 years of materials research that came before it. We'll hear from MRS President-elect Takao Someya about what it's like to take office at such an important moment in MRS history. We'll also talk to MRS Impact Award winner Anne Lynn Gillian Daniel about all the work she's done for the society. Plus, we'll start our tour of top materials researchers around the world, from Germany to Texas to Ohio, finding out what exciting new projects and developments are on the horizon. But first, let's hear from our MRS meeting chairs to find out what they're most excited for at this 50th anniversary meeting. It's great to be back here in San Francisco uh, for MRS's 50th anniversary. It's been uh, several years since the MRS meeting has been here and I'm based in Berkeley, so just on the other side of the bay. I'm really excited to welcome people um, back to San Francisco to celebrate M MRS's 50th anniversary. It is a great opportunity uh, to connect with uh, fellow researchers uh, and exchange knowledge and ideas and uh, showcase the latest advancement in material research. We have a couple really um, interesting events that are particularly geared towards MRS's 50th anniversary. So there is the special celebration on Wednesday evening. Um, so attendees can celebrate that way, but the meeting chairs have also organized a special Symposium X panel that is Tuesday afternoon at 1215 that features um, past and present um, MRS presidents and journal editors to talk about the last 50 years of materials research, but importantly, look ahead to what the future 50 years might look like. MRS Spring Meeting typically uh, features diverse ranges, ranges of sessions and events that covers uh, various aspects of material research. So attendees uh, should be uh, on the outlook for the sessions and events uh, that aligns with their research interests and goals. The meeting chairs have been working hard over, I think, about a year and a half now to put together the program, and we're really excited for um, the mix of technical programming that we've put together for this meeting. So I hope people get a chance to uh, share their science and um, talk to colleagues and make some new connections. Next, let's head all the way to Halle, Germany. The Max Planck Institute is looking for PhD students and postdocs to work with highly motivated scientists in their top-of-the-line facilities to do the impossible and change the world. Could MPI Halle be a good fit for you? Let's find out. We want to do the impossible in the sense we want to go beyond what others have done. We want to push the boundaries of science and we want to create entirely new materials and devices that could in the future create new technologies that can change the world. We collaborate with our colleagues here so that we can reap the benefits of all of our facilities and share our expertise. The Max Planck Institute allows me a lot of flexibility to combine research and also family life. And I'm a theoretician working in an experimental department. And this gives me the, the chance to discuss with many experimentalists to change my perspective on the science. We have unlimited resources and unlimited support from our director and from the institute. We create these materials one atomic layer at a time. These materials then have fundamentally new properties. So we're interested in exploring these properties, but we're also interested in using these materials to create entirely new technologies, particularly in the domain of digital storage and computing. So for those of you interested in carrying out cutting-edge research, 
potentially with impact on technologies in the future, please come and join us here at the Max Planck Institute of Microstructure Physics in Halle. You're all very welcome. Thank you to our 2023 MRS Spring Meeting Chairs, Robert Bloom, Tae Wu Lee, Siren Lim, Catherine Page, and Ashley White for all of their hard work in ensuring the success of this meeting. Pulling together a meeting of this magnitude is no easy task, and these meeting chairs worked for over two years to bring you this event. Scan the QR code to download the MRS Meeting app. You can use the app to personalize your schedule, search the meeting to quickly find interests and speakers, and connect with your fellow attendees. Congratulations to this year's recipient of the Fred Kavli Distinguished Lectureship in Materials Science, Sir Kostya Novoslov of National University of Singapore and the University of Manchester. Dr. Novoslov will deliver his lecture, Materials for the Future, on Tuesday, April 11, at 8.45 a.m. in the Intercontinental Third Floor Grand Ballroom. Thanks to the Kavli Foundation for their many years of support for this lectureship. To view the complete public health statement for this meeting, scan the QR code on this slide. The responsibility for a safe and healthy event environment is shared by every meeting participant. Thank you for adhering to our health and safety precautions. 2023 marks the 50th anniversary of the Materials Research Society, and it's almost time to submit an abstract for the 2023 MRS Fall Meeting. Abstracts will be accepted from May 16th to June 13th. The MRS Communications Lecture recognizes excellence in materials research through impactful and influential work published in MRS Communications. Congratulations to Blair Bretman from the Georgia Institute of Technology, who was selected to present her work in material extrusion additive manufacturing for the 2023 MRS Communications Lecture. I'm here with Anne Lynn Gillian Daniel. She's the winner of the MRS Impact Award. Congratulations, Anne Lynn. Thank you so much. What a great honor. How does it feel to have you, all your hard work recognized by your peers here at MRS? Well, I'm very honored. And uh, when I got the call about the award, I was I was really excited. I had to call my family right away. So <laughs> I was thrilled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I really, I really am honored. You know, this is a huge society. People do amazing work here. So to be selected to um, be given this award was really nice. Tell us a little bit about, about your work. What, what led to the award? Yeah, so, um, so I'm the Director of Education Outreach for the Material Research Science and Engineering Center mm -hmm. at Wisconsin. So MRS is a natural fit uh, for our work. Sure. And I got involved probably about 10 years ago. I do a lot of different things that actually align well with the society. So I started by doing outreach Mm -hmm. um, we would have outreach events during the coffee breaks at the meeting. So I would bring some tabletop activities, interact with the MRS members, which nice. was fun. Nice, yeah. Um, in my career, I've started really focusing a lot on issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so I've done training. I've um, learned to lead a lot of workshops. I facilitate a lot of workshops. And then through that, I've been invited to MRS to lead workshops there. So I've done that for the past several years. And then another area where I intersect with uh, MRS is I teach a class on science communication mm -hmm. that uses improvisational skills. Well, that kind of segues nicely into my next question for you, which is that we've interviewed you before for yes. <laughs> MRS TV. And um, last year, we talked about your improv for science communication session. What motivates you to be so deeply involved at MRS? One of the things I think is the alignment with my research center in terms of um, being a material society. Uh, but the other part is I feel like MRS has evolved along with me. So my career is really moving in this area of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I'm finding that MRS is moving in that direction as well. And so our interests really align mm. in that area. 
Um, and then the other part is just working with the people at headquarters has been amazing. They are an amazing group of people. And so I've really enjoyed working with them. So I want to hear more about that um, because you're at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, yes. as you said, and you are constantly encouraging underrepresented groups to get more involved in material science. What are some of the specific initiatives you're doing in that area? Yeah, so we have sort of a multi-pronged approach. So one of the things we focus on a lot is the climate at our own institution, right? We need to be mm -hmm. welcoming and inclusive in order to both recruit and retain people, right? You can get people to come in, but if you're not a good environment, they're not going to stay. And so one of the things I've recently done is I've partnered with a group on campus that runs a workshop on ways to mitigate the impact of your implicit bias. Mm -hmm. And it's called Breaking the Bias Habit. So I lead that for my colleagues. Um, at the university and we have a lot of conversations about well, why do we want to be a diverse environment and then what do we need to do to be inclusive and I'm actually going to lead that workshop here at MRS on Wednesday um, oh, perfect. for the MRS members yeah and so again there's that alignment between what I'm doing at Wisconsin and then what is needed in the society um, and then in terms of sort of the younger generation so k-12 students Material science is a great inroad to any science, technology, engineering, and math field because it's so tactile, right? There's stuff yeah. you can touch and look at and see. Um, and then it impacts your everyday life, right? Your cell phone, the concrete you drive on, the glass and windows. The golf club you swing. Exactly. All of that is material yeah. science. And so you can really relate to people where they already are, things that they already know about. Thanks so much for joining us, Anne Lynn. Now, the Center for Research Excellence on Dynamically Deformed Solids, an NNSA program, is focused on preparing students for future careers in stockpile stewardship with the national labs. Let's take a closer look. The Center for Research Excellence on Dynamically Deformed Solids, or CREDS, is a research center funded by the National Nuclear Security Administration. It's a part of the Department of Energy responsible for maintaining the nuclear deterrent of the United States. Since the signing of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, the United States has certified that its nuclear deterrent will work without any nuclear testing, only using basic research. When a nuclear weapon goes off, all the parts of it deform at extremely high rates. To certify a nuclear weapon without testing it, you have to be able to predict precisely how that deformation is going to occur. That's where CREDS comes in. CREDS provides a unique academic experience for students to gain the skills that they need for stockpile stewardship. You'll definitely learn a lot. I know I have. And you'll walk away a better scientist and better researcher and ready to uh, take your skills to whatever's next in your career. I'm here with Takao Somaya, who is the vice president, but is the incoming president for MRS. Takao, thanks so much for being here with us. Yes, my pleasure. Um, so what are you most excited about for this 50th anniversary meeting? I'm so excited to work for the uh, MRS as uh, vice president at the special moment to celebrate the uh, 50 years uh, anniversary. Mm -hmm because uh, I'm a member of MRS since the, um, I was a graduate student and routinely oh uh, coming to the both spring and fall meeting. So oh, that was just five years ago, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this looks like a home to me and yeah. uh, I'm really excited to join as uh, a big celebration. That's wonderful. And how does it feel to be the incoming president at such a momentous time in the history of MRS. Our modern society mm -hmm. is facing the uh, big problems, such mm -hmm. as a global warming and a pandemic and uh, many others. And material innovation uh, is needed to solve some of those problems. And expectation to the you know, MRS is getting larger than ever. And so, can you um, expand on that? Like, what are some of the biggest challenges you see right now that material science could help solve? Well, energy and environment is one of the good examples, and biotechnology, nanotechnology. And also, uh, semiconductors are getting more and more important because all the IT infrastructure requires the semiconductors. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, material society can contribute to the uh, further growth of semiconductors industry yeah. and uh, also academia. And also AI, right? I mean, all the chips are needed to make AI work. 
Yeah. And everybody's talking about AI now. Yeah, exactly. So people are talking about the AI and recently chat GPT. Yeah. That also rely on the semiconductor technology. So you're the incoming president. Everybody's looking to you to lead the organization. What are your hopes for the next 50 years of MRS? This is quite important question. So I really like the um, good atmosphere of MRS. So we should definitely keep that environment forever. Mm -hmm. Like the um, empowerment of uh, motivated volunteers and dedicated staff. And also uh, we should empower the young people. So such kind of uh, natural uh, em environment of MRS should be kept. And simultaneously, uh, we should aggressively adapt the uh, new system, like uh, to promote the multidisciplinary research area. So honoring the old traditions, but also making sure you keep an eye on some of the new technologies and areas of research. Yeah, areas of research should be emphasized simultaneously. Uh, as you may know, the MRS now pushing the uh, D and I. Yes, and D -E -I. I, uh, D -I. Yes. So uh, I really like that aspiration. And uh, so we, we really uh, want to create the uh, new organization mm -hmm. that is suitable for the, you know, promoting DEI in academic community and also others. Thanks so much for joining us, Takao. Next, Lakeshore Cryotronics is introducing their new venture, CryoComplete. This all-in-one cryogenic system for electrical characterization provides everything you'll need to start taking temperature-dependent low-level measurements. By and large, the majority of our sensors and instruments are used in general research projects all over the world. When Janus joined Lakeshore, we recognized how their cryogenic expertise and products could expand our existing solutions. CryoComplete is a series of complete cryogenic measurement solutions. Uh, it has our M81 synchronous source measure system, our 335 temperature controller, VPF100 cryostat, calibrated sensor, and MeasureLink software. Because each part of CryoComplete, from the sensor, instrumentation, cryostat, is a piece Lakeshore designs and manufactures, we have full control of optimizing the entire measurement signal path. I can't wait to see all the research CryoComplete will enable. Well, that brings the first episode of MRS TV's 50th anniversary special to a close. There's still plenty more to come throughout the week, but if you want to look back at some of this episode's highlights, you can keep watching MRS TV on screens around the Moscone Center, on the MRS website, in your hotel room on Channel 67 at the Intercontinental, or on Channel 60 at the Marriott Marquis. And finally, on YouTube and Twitter. In our next episode, we'll focus on how to make the most of your MRS conference experience. We'll learn about MRS Prem, pop into Symposium X, and chat with more MRS award winners. Until then, I'm Tui Vu. I'll see you tomorrow.